This is Hedwig, the magical white owl made famous by the Harry Potter films. He is a snowy owl and has captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. This film is a story following the lives of one remarkable family of snowy owls. We get an extraordinary insight into the lives of one pair as they raise young in the Arctic. What we discover about them confirms that they are truly special, not just among owls, but all creatures. In the Midwest of the United States, some remarkable visitors have arrived. These are young snowy owls. They can appear in places like this and then just vanish. Snowy owls are nomads. Such majestic creatures might well look out of place in broad daylight among the homes and farmlands of Wisconsin. These young snowy owls are here to avoid the worst of the Arctic winter much further north. The weather down here is less extreme. And prey is easier to find. These owls haven't yet fully mastered all the skills needed to survive a winter further north, where their parents can. A rare glimpse of them like this is as close an encounter with a snowy owl as many of us could ever hope for. Snowy owls are one of the biggest owls in the world. They have extraordinary vision. Unique telescopic sight allows them to lock onto prey from great distances. They'll need every skill and sense to survive in the Arctic, the land of snow and ice, where their parents remain. This is the Arctic. In winter, the sun remains permanently below the horizon in a continuous polar night. Adult snowy owls can remain here throughout these cold, dark months. Only the most experienced are capable of living year-round in this eerie, bleak, frozen land.
As well as being telescopic, these extraordinary eyes are sensitive enough to see in this permanent twilight. Being powerful owls, they can take large prey as well. There's often little choice. There is not much life up here at all. Light is slowly returning to the Arctic. It is now that the true majesty of the snowy owl can be seen in its frozen white kingdom. There is little relief from the constant wind. For adult snowy owls, the lengthening daylight means the chance to breed is drawing closer. It may not look like it, but the start of the short Arctic summer is racing towards them. Snowy owls must nest on the first snow-free patch of tundra they can find. From year to year, this can be in a totally different place, anywhere across the entire Arctic. It's late May, and if we're to succeed in filming snowy owls, we're going to have to find them soon. Snowy owls could be breeding anywhere from Siberia to Canada. We hope to follow a family being raised over the short summer. Though this early on, not even the scientists know where we should be. If numbers were high in one area last year, it doesn't mean to say this summer will be the same. There is evidence from regurgitated pellets that owls have been here recently, but no sign of a nest. Days pass, and we still haven't found any breeding snowy owls. We hope this year won't be one of those when hardly any breed at all. It is June already, and all around us the snow and ice is melting at great speed. The exposed tundra attracts migrants from the south. They're all looking for a place to nest. Summer lasts just a few short months. Anything choosing to breed must get a move on. The sun now stays permanently above the horizon. It will not set again for 82 days. A lead from a scientist has brought us to the north slope of Alaska. In some years, the tundra here is dotted with snowy owl nests. Though so far, we think we may have got it all wrong. And there will never be time now to move to another part of the Arctic. This sudden attack by a male snowy owl is making us think we've walked into his breeding territory. Anything that comes within a kilometer of a snowy owl's nest can get attacked like this, even wolves and polar bears. We have to set up the hide a long way back to avoid disturbing the owls again.
it's a huge relief to be settled in. She's definitely on eggs. And at last, we can start to observe and film. She's the only nesting owl on the whole tundra. We can't see another breeding pair anywhere else in this landscape. If she fails, our trip is doomed. The absence of any other owls must be saying something. Is our pair doing the right thing by trying to breed? One owlet has hatched. There could be more. We know that snowy owls can lay up to 14 eggs, the biggest clutch size of any owl. The owlets hatch every few days, but under her blanket of feathers, we have no idea yet how many there are. Our male snowy owl can be seen from way off. His bright white plumage signals to others that this is his territory. With our female keeping the owlets warm, catching prey is all up to him. If the weather is this good, he must spend all his time hunting. Conditions here can change in an instant. Fog or strong winds will make it impossible for him. The success of this year's breeding will all now depend on how much prey there is for him to catch. has caught something. It's a brown lemming he has brought in. On the rare calm day like this, he can really put the hours into hunting. While they are this small, it's her job to break the food up into bite-sized morsels. Those little mouths could choke on more. She's long-sighted, so can't see the owlets when they're this close to her face. The bristles over her beak help her feel for them. Are there no other owls because they know there's not enough food? Birds like these pectoral sandpipers and red phalarope can be caught on occasion. Though for snowy owls to raise young successfully, there must be enough lemming. The trouble is, across the Arctic, lemming can be utterly unpredictable, even in one small area. Their numbers can erupt or disappear at any moment throughout the summer. For snowy owls, this makes breeding a complete gamble. There have been years on this bit of tundra with over 30 breeding pairs of owls at once. This year, the place is deserted except for our pair. We found an abandoned nest, which isn't a good sign. We're increasingly concerned that our pair was failed too. We can count five owlets in the nest. Five. They'll need a huge amount of food as they grow. While they are this age, 
The owlets need her warmth, particularly when it's this cold and windy. With no high point to look out from, he hovers and uses his telescopic vision to scour the tundra below for movement. He can't afford to miss like this. Only he can do the hunting. She is keeping them safe and warm. They're vulnerable on the ground like this, and there's one predator to really watch out for. Polar bears. With the sea ice melted, they're forced into sharing this part of tundra with our owls. If polar bears find the youngsters unattended, they will eat them. This time, the bears are moving up the coastline, though they may well be back. It's not for lack of trying that he's not making regular deliveries. There are just so few lemmings around. This is forcing her out to hunt herself. She's leaving the owlets much earlier than she should. The youngest owlet is only days old. She should be there to keep it out of the freezing wind. The male has caught a small bird. It's a phalarope. In her eagerness to get him back out hunting again, she comes in to do the feeding. We haven't seen many phalarope around at all. He has done well to catch this. Are the lemmings that difficult to find? One small bird is never going to satisfy the hunger of all five owlets. Without much to go around, the oldest and biggest tend to reach the food first. Sometimes, the male is not coming in for hours on end. The lack of prey is forcing her off the nest time and again. We're starting to worry things may be taking a turn for the worse. Without her to keep them warm, the owlets are seeking refuge out of the wind, down below the mound. They are too young to leave the nest. 
it has not been recorded before. We're worried to see this strange behavior. The smallest owlet is only 10 days old and by nature of its size is the most vulnerable. This Glaucus gull has been hanging around and perhaps knows that things aren't going to plan for this family of owls. She can't afford to travel too far from the nest, though she's bringing back virtually nothing for them. It's as if she doesn't know where to turn. These owlets really aren't getting enough food. A half-shut eye can mean a bird isn't well. The youngest is looking alarmingly small. He is rarely off the wing and hovering higher and higher on the lookout for food. His efforts have paid off, but it's a long flight back to the nest. For the owlets, this couldn't have come soon enough. It is a race to get fed, though the youngest and smallest is stuck at the back of the queue. The male seems to have found one particular area, way off, which is rich in lemming. He is obviously a great hunter. There's just been so little to catch. The bigger owlets can consume a whole lemming in one go. Things are looking up. With food coming in, perhaps our family's fortunes have changed. Though we're noticing an increasing divide between the youngest owlet and its older siblings. She seems to be aware that the youngest is struggling. She is trying to do something about it. Unlike many other birds of prey, all the evidence is that snowy owls are particularly caring mothers. What we're seeing in front of us certainly supports that notion. Despite her attempts to help the owlet by sharing food out, its strength is visibly failing it.
At this age, the owlets each need as many as five lemmings a day. The weather can change so quickly here in the Arctic that the owlets must be in a good condition or they won't survive any colder spells. Freezing fogs like this can roll in off the Arctic Ocean in a matter of hours. This can keep the lemmings underground. Even she is now begging to the male for food. How long is this fog going to last? Some eight hours later, it's easing, though thick fogs like these can last for days. Things have taken another turn for the worse. The youngest owlet stands weak and isolated. It no longer has the strength to stay with the others. She's detecting that it's too weak to feed now. though she can at least brood it tenderly. It's a surprise to see this gentle side to her nature. She is so caring. We have to remind ourselves that she's just an owl. Even the older owlets now seem concerned for their ever-weakening sibling. In his relentless search, our male is now prospecting for lemmings right out towards the coast. This is a good few kilometers from the nest. The lemming numbers can rise and fall so quickly. It's impossible to know where to look. There could be small pockets of them anywhere on the tundra. There doesn't seem to be any movement from the youngest owlet now. It must be dead. She knows this too. She has invested everything into trying to save her youngest. But there are four others that need her attention. Right in front of us, we notice a sudden and complete change in her. In what seems to us a desperate measure, she feeds the lifeless body to the others.
this might at least keep them alive. There's absolutely no sign of the male. With her mate nowhere to be seen, and her youngest owlet dead, what is she to do next? Their efforts to breed are turning into a disaster. Hours later, we spot him with a lemming. He hurries back to the nest. But his family seems to have gone. He's confused. They are hundreds of meters away on the tundra. It's a long way to travel, though there is food out there and there's no time to lose. This is the kind of density of lemmings he has been waiting for all summer. Keen to get a meal, the owlets are all moving towards him. With them no longer on the nest and moving hundreds of meters a day, we have to keep up. We need a more mobile hide. A day like this in July can turn foul in hours. A rainstorm can appear from nowhere. Nothing is certain for these snowy owls, yet whatever challenges come at them, they seem to keep going. We have experienced a few drizzly days up here, but freezing rain like this can be a killer. There is no shelter on the tundra. It's two long days before the weather starts to clear.
Snowy Owlets are equipped with thick grey down. It's one of the best insulators in the natural world. Within five days, all of the owlets are over half a kilometer away from the nest. It's astonishing to see them waddle across the tundra like this. It's such a relief for all that he has found a good hunting spot. The owlets look so much healthier. This is the age that they need more food than ever. They're growing exponentially. It's now mid-July and summer has reached its height. For a short window, flowers like Arctic poppies add a splash of color to this otherwise bleak landscape. All other birds here breeding will be on the wing long before our young snowy owls. Any movement seems to catch their curious eye. One has spotted a nesting golden plover. They like to investigate everything around them. They're just so curious. Something has alarmed the male. It's the polar bears again. Only this time, they're heading right towards them. It's a mother and her own hungry cubs. The owlets have to stay hidden. Their gray down keeps them well camouflaged, though their scent may give them away. If the bears get much closer to the owlets, the adults may well take them on and stoop at them like they did at us when we arrived.
the bears seem to be heading inland. Our female looks set on taking the owlets in the other direction, to where the male is hunting. She flies between different mounds as if to encourage the owlets to follow. The whole family of owls is moving ever closer to the coast. They are over a kilometer from the nest now, and it's only a short distance to go. But there's a problem. A river is in the way. To our knowledge, the owlets can neither fly nor swim. What are they going to do now? Will they be stuck here until they can fly? The temperature in July can at times creep up to well over 10 degrees centigrade. For the Arctic, this is a baking hot day. Wearing a thick coat of down is hard work. All this warmth and water brings another problem. Mosquitoes. They're a real nuisance around the eyes. By the end of July, most of the tundra is covered in mosquitoes. Only a breeze will keep them at bay. Maybe this is another reason the owl family is heading to the coast. but they're going to have to get across this river somehow. These owls continue to amaze us. Will the other siblings make it across?
They make it look easy. Maybe third time lucky. never imagined we would see this. It has never been recorded or filmed before. With the owlets well ahead, we can get out of our hide. Almost a week has passed. The owlet's flight feathers are growing fast and they could take to the wing any day now. The whole family has reached the shoreline where the coastal breeze keeps all mosquitoes at bay. There is an ample food supply. The adults are catching more than is even wanted. The owlets exercise their wing muscles and snatch at pretend prey. We can tell the youngsters apart now. There are two males and two females. Females have more dark barring on their wings. The season is turning in front of us. There's already a noticeable change in some of the colors on the tundra. It's only August, and these are the first signs of autumn. Brent geese are gathering in large flocks, ready to fly south. Though our parent owls can remain up here when the long polar winter returns, their offspring must leave. They could never have all the skills needed to stay alive through a winter up here. Only very experienced snowy owls can do that. Our youngsters will go where the weather will be less extreme and pray more certain. All the summer visitors to this most northerly tip of Alaska are now preparing to leave. With few obstacles to avoid, the tundra is a good place to learn how to fly. Our snowy owlets persevere with all their strength just like in everything else we've seen them do. The sun is dropping ever closer to the horizon. The polar day is coming to an end and our owlets are taking to the sky for the first time.
As we leave these astonishing birds, we realize what it takes to live and breed up here. Our snowy owls have done amazingly well to raise four owlets in an impossibly difficult year. Soon, our parent snowy owls will be locked in another long, dark, icy winter. It is their home, their domain. <laughs>